wanted to remake this video on my Prusik trainer. This is one of my favorite DIY calisthenics equipment projects that I highlight in my book, Smart Body Weight Training, all sorts of neat little DIY gadgets in the bonus chapter on that. Link is down below if you wanna check that out. But the Prusik trainer is simple, very affordable, and much more versatile than most of the other suspension trainers on the market. So here's a little bit of a tutorial on how you can make your own. So first thing we're going to gather our materials. There's only three main components for the Prusik trainer. Uh, what you see in front of you is just for one side of it. So you're going to double everything that you have here for the full trainer. First off, we have our rope. We have a length of eight millimeter rope here and a length of four millimeter rope here. Notice it's a two to one ratio for the diameter. That's very important to give yourself a good secure uh, grip on the sliding handle rope. You can get your rope at any of uh, climbing stores, REI. I recommend getting it in person so that you can have someone cut it to length for you. Uh, that way you get these nice, crisp, uh, melted edges. If you try and cut it yourself with scissors, it's going to fray over time and not look quite as nice and make it harder to use the rope. The lengths for each of these is going to depend a little bit on how high your anchor point is, but your hanging rope, the eight millimeter, is going to be between seven to nine feet in length, and your handle rope is going to be three feet in length. The third piece is your handle. Of course, a lot of DIY suspension trainers use PVC, which works okay, but I much prefer to use an actual exercise uh, handle because it's built for that purpose. It also gives you a nice grip texture. You don't have to wrap it in any sort of sticky tape or anything. It also gives you a nice smooth edge here on the lip. So it's not something rough that's going to be rubbing against the four millimeter rope and give it some fraying and risk breaking and causing a safety issue down the line. It is a little more expensive to do it this way, but considering that this is the part of the trainer that's gonna be in contact with you and you're gonna be having most interaction with it, I think it's well worth it. This one in particular is off of a D handle from Inspire Fitness. It's a just snip off the nylon strap and then you get this nice, smooth, very durable nylon plastic handle, which I think is well worth the cost and effort. The first step towards assembling your trainer is very simple. You just take your nylon handle, feed the handle rope, the four millimeter rope through it, and you're going to tie the ends together with a fisherman's knot. So it's going to look something like this here. Very secure knot here. And when you're using it, you're going to have the knot inside the handle. So that way you don't have anything uh, rubbing against your arm on these sides and you have a nice smooth, clean line all the way around. Also make sure that both handle loops are roughly about the same length. This will just make it easier to keep the handles the same level when you're doing exercises on your suspension trainer. The next step is to take your hanging rope, the eight millimeter rope, and tie in a bowline knot in one end for your anchor point. That's going to look something like this here. A Couple of key points to note when making your bowline knot is make sure you've got plenty of rope on the end so that way it's not on the very edge and risk slipping through. Also make sure that this loop here is large enough for the handle to slip through, which will make it easier to take down and set up the suspension trainer once it is fully assembled. Assembly is simple. Just throw the bowline anchor knot over some sort of overhead structure, slip the rest of the rope through it to create a tight hold. Create some tension in the hanging rope by placing your foot on the bottom or having someone simply pull down on the rope. Creating this tension will make it easier for the next step, which is looping the handle rope around the hanging rope three times to tie a Prusik knot. Make sure that the Prusik knot is bound tight and flat against the rope. You don't have any sort of overlapping ropes or anything. Refer to uh, animatedknots.com to make sure that your Prusik knot looks exactly like the type that they have pictured in their illustrations. From there, you're ready to rock and roll. All you do is simply give a little bit of a loosening on the Prusik knot, slide it to the desired height, give a little bit of a tug on the end of the knot in order to cinch it to your hanging knot, and you have a full secure hold to do any sort of suspension exercises that you wish.
So what are some of your favorite DIY calisthenics projects or have you made your own suspension trainers? Want to share your tips down below. Also, what are some of your favorite suspension training exercises that you like to share with the RDP community? Leave me questions down below if something wasn't clear about how to make it. Don't forget the Smart Bodyweight Training book links are also there as well. Be fit, live free.